starting skin is a bit different, but there have been various modifications of it. Uh, because to do a target very accurately, you need an accelerometer and you need to see at what speed you are going because there is a specific speed at which you need to go to be very accurate on it. But uh, that is not what is preferred it as R1 and R2. So R1 is the first catch or the first slightest resistance that you feel when you're moving the pen. And R2 is the point at which you feel you have a very hard end feel at that point. You cannot go beyond it to that point. Um, usually the recommendation is that you do the movement really fast because you are basically looking for spasticity versus tightness. And spasticity is speed dependent. So if you're going to be slow, you may miss the R1. And you might get the R1 later at some stage, but it's actually not the R1. It's R2. So then you're not very accurate in that way. So um, usually they also recommend that you do a passive range of motion. But some studies also say that if you do it, you are already you move the limb once, and that kind of influences the spasticity to some extent. So um, I would say uh, I usually do the passive arms only if I'm not sure, or if I'm seeing the patient the very first time and I'm not sure of the range, then I do it. But I usually do not influence this spasticity in any way. Before you actually start, uh, it's important to explain to the patient to be as relaxed as possible. Because the patient, if the patient is tense, that again doesn't give you a very accurate value of the targets. Um, I'll start with the lower limb. So uh, we'll start off with the tendo please. You start in a plantar flex position. You have your hand on the heel basically. And some people, there are two ways of doing this. Some people are very sensitive to touch on their sole and that might also elicit some spasticity. So sometimes all you want to do is this, but you need to be absolutely an expert to catch the R1 when you're doing this because you might just miss it if you're not experienced. Um, so sometimes if it's really very severe and if I realize that the patient is not very sensitive over the sole of the foot, I just start off this way. So. Any degree in plantar flexion is recorded as a minus for the ankle. So for example, if I feel the first catch at this point, and if I'm just going to eyeball it, I'll say this is minus 40 or minus 30. And um, then you actually do a really fast movement and come up into dorsiflexion. Anything recorded into dorsiflexion is a plus. So your targets can be R1 minus 30, R2 0, R1 minus 50, R2 plus 5, so uh, depending on where the foot is. And again, you might want to check for tightness, but as I said, um, if, if that only happens if you don't know the client. I wouldn't really be fluent because once I've done this, I've stretched the tendon and that has influenced the spasticity a little bit. So all I would do is just stabilize the leg, ask the patient to relax, and really go fast from this position. Now, this is the point in Agora's ankle where I don't think I can go beyond this point, and it might be painful at this point. Uh, so I would say her R2 is maybe plus 2 degrees or plus 5 degrees. And of course, when you eyeball, you can be 5 degrees plus and minus because it's eyeballing. Um, if you want to be really accurate, you can use a volumeter. But the only reason why we do not really want a very accurate R1 and R2 uh, with regards to the angle is because you just want to see the difference between them. You don't really want to know if the R1 was like at 35 or 40. That's a really yeah. Yeah. Right. And especially in severe spasticity, uh, plans with severe spasticity, it's even harder to judge. position. Ideally this portion should be relaxed because if these muscles are activating then uh, that would influence the spasticity of the hamstrings as well. It wouldn't give you a correct value. So um, if the limb is heavy you can have someone holding the right leg in a relaxed position and I'm just going to go slow for the sake of demonstration because I don't know what your type is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go very slow. 
So you go to you start off from the full range. You start off from here, and then you go up. It's very easy to miss the arm, so you kind of have to feel and feel. Maybe I would recommend now in this week. Uh, maybe we can also practice feeling. Your goal. For example, if your goal for the client is sitting, then you might want to measure the targets and sitting because then the Botox units will depend on uh, what kind Function, of targets you yeah. uh, have when the client is sitting. So um, basically, for the wrist, for example, if it's a wrist flexion, you support the extremity. You start off with wrist flexion and quickly bring, bring the hand into wrist extension. I usually leave the fingers loose because you don't want the length of the fingers to influence anything at the wrist. Um, similarly with the elbow, start at full range, quickly bring the hand down and um, judge where the R1 and R2 is. Uh, for pronators, just start off with uh, supination and quickly take the arm into pronation and see where the R1 and R2 is. So for, a 90 degrees flexion of the elbow? Yes, that's correct. Um, again, for the shoulder adductors, for example, this is the way you measure it. For um, the shoulder extensors, you take it up there. Usually these are not the commonly tested groups. It's the biceps and the wrist uh, flexors that have to be most, most of the time. Right. Yeah. It's kind of hard to practice it on normal people. You kind of have to do it And tardus, uh, you need to make a decision whether you want to support the legs in flexion under pillows, you want them relaxed or you want them extended. You kind of go towards functional positions because that is what mm -hmm. you are when you are standing up. Uh, but it also depends on the goal. And then, uh, then we come to um, how we decide on whether we're going to send the patient for Botox or whether are we recommending a release, there are various options. So there is only Botox, there is a Botox and release, there is only release, there is a Botox and casting or there is a only casting. So this kind of depends on the difference between the R1 and R2 and also on your goal. Now uh, uh, for if there is a, a 30 degree or more difference between